Hey, uh, um, hello? Ooh, a little soldier. I love that. Oh, thanks. Can you make me stronger? I could do that, but I think that you can just come uh, live with me forever. Oh. What? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, hi. Ladies, gentlemen, and Hylians of all ages, Tears of the Kingdom is a game just absolutely chock full of activities for you to do, and some of them aren't easier than others. Many are straightforward, some require advanced traversal mechanics, some require you to be pretty good at combat, and some are just little flavor activities that are fun to do. But pretty much no matter what you are doing today within this game, there is probably one specific armor set that would make your life easier while you're doing it. And that's why I always say it's better to pick up these awesome pieces of equipment sooner rather than later. And so today we'll be going over another nice meaty collection of armor sets that you need to get for yourself in Tears of the Kingdom at some point over the course of your journey. Starting off with number one, the Soldier Set. This aesthetically is just an awesome armor set. It just makes you look like a straight up Hylian knight, and who doesn't like to have a little bit of a knight aesthetic in their life every once in a while? As far as armor skills, this set doesn't have any of them. Not at base, not when upgraded, it just sort of is what it is. A nice looking set that also happens to be able to reach 28 defense per piece at max level, which makes it tied for the highest defense armor set in the game at 84 total with all pieces equipped, which is just nutty strong when being hit by attacks to make them do a ton less damage. That said, while there are other armor sets that can reach this number, almost all of them require a lot more intensive materials to get them there than this one does. The soldier set's upgrade path is just some relatively common monster materials and then some low-level mining materials the entire way up, so this is probably the easiest and earliest set for you to actually have at max upgrades, and thus the earliest proper defense that you can actually achieve within the game. That said, how do you actually get it then? Well, it's all along the same sort of path, really, with your starting point being this gate right at the start of Hyrule Castle. You come here super early in the game, but to get your paraglider afterwards, but if you come back after you get that, you can actually do all of this pretty much immediately if you want to. Then some more paths will open up to you. Head through the gate and run up this hill to enter the first archway on your right here. Use Ultra Hand in here to lift up some gates and walk through them, and then you'll have enemies in the room, but you can just ignore them. Head up the set of stairs to your right and you will see a metal grate in the middle of the room. Ultra hand it open and then drop down to find a chest that contains a diamond. That's not our goal here, but it is a real nifty find along the way. After that, drop down the middle of the spiral staircase to reach the bottom of it where you will find a wall of breakable rocks in front of you. A lot of this journey will be full of breakable rocks, so be ready for breaking rocks. As you break these, they will drop basic weapons and rocks that you can fuse to them to make new wall breakers as you go. Break the wall, go behind it, and you'll find another wall to break before it opens up into a larger cavern. Glide straight across to another breakable wall here and smash through here one bit at a time. Mine are pretty open just to show the path, but you do have to smash these yourself. Once through here though, drop down and you will see some more breakable rocks behind you. Smash them open to reveal a secret little prison area. Walk through to the second cell on the right and ultra hand the boulder out of the way. Drop into the pit that the boulder was covering, head to the other end and ascend up through the floor to find the chest containing the soldier's armor chest piece. From here, drop back down into the hole that you came up through and ascend back up into the main chamber. You can make a nice rock breaking weapon here if you want to with the boulder in the cell before you go. If you need more breaking weapons, then head back out of the entrance and straight across is a sturdier breakable wall with some bomb flowers outside of it. Break the wall open however you choose to do so and then follow the path forward to more of the same. Breakable wall, break it again, and behind this is a bit of an underground pond. Swim along it to the right side and then look to your left and you will see a little entrance once again covered in breakable rocks. Swim up to it and break it either from a distance or up close and inside to the left behind this is an ice-like and beside that is the chest containing the soldier's helm. Head back out the way that we came in here and follow the pond this time to the left, swimming through the archway. Ignore the first breakable wall that's beside you for now on the other side of this and beat up any keys that are on your way as you follow this path upwards to another breakable wall. Smash it down however you please to do so, deal with the stall enemies on the little bridge that are on the other side of it, and then smash open one more wall of rocks and then on the right, a final set of breakable rocks blocking our path. Destroy these, head on in, and then on the left behind another like-like is the chest that holds these soldiers' greaves. Set complete. Number two, stealth set. When it comes to collecting critters and creatures or even just setting up combat in a preferable way, there are a few sets as good as this one, mostly just due to the skill stealth up. This skill decreases the amount of sound that you make just as a whole, but it makes it so when you have all three ranks and you are crouching, you are barely even noticeable to enemies until you get right up next to them. There are a few sets that I even have this skill, but this one is an absolute classic of the Zelda series, the stealth set modeled after Sheikah armor. And it actually is really easy to get in Tears of the Kingdom too, not 
Not to mention that once you upgrade it to two stars on each armor piece, it gains a set bonus for having all pieces equipped, which is Night Speed Up, which allows you to not only have the stealth on the armor, but also move faster in dark areas or during the night in the overworld, which can also be said is good for stealth. And who can say no to a bit of faster movement speed? As for how to get it then, it's pretty easy. This one is purchasable from the armor shop in Kakariko Village, but when you first get there, you'll notice it is sold for the silly price of 5,000 rupees per armor piece. You can buy it for that price if you really feel so inclined to do so, or you can instead choose to do a lovely little quest for the shop owner to help out their sick grandmother. Simply head towards the eastern exit of the town to this specific location over here, where you will find a woman beside a cooking pot and talk to her to learn more about the quest. She tells you that she needs a specific dish created, one called a veggie porridge, but one that also clears the gloom. To fit those needs, you need three specific ingredients, sundalions, which you can find all around the world really, though more commonly on Sky Islands, then also Hylian rice and fresh milk. The last two ingredients can be found just generally, but the easiest way for you to acquire them from here is just west of Kakariko Town itself on the road heading out is a roaming merchant who will sell both of these items for 12 rupees each. Head back to the cooking pot, whip up a meal with these ingredients, and give it to the woman beside you. A lovely little cutscene will play, and then if you return to the shop afterwards, the armor will be lowered to a much more reasonable price. On top of that, if for whatever reason you chose to buy the armor for 5,000 rupees each because you're crazy, you will actually be refunded the difference in price when the quest is over, so that's nice at least. Number 3. Sheik's Mask And this is another sort of classic armor piece in the series and in Tears of the Kingdom, it is not overly hard to acquire, which is nice too. As far as actual practical usage, it is essentially identical to the helmet of the stealth set, same defense, and it also has stealth up as a skill. I was really hoping that it would even count as a set piece for the upgrade level 2 set bonus if you paired it with the stealth set, but of course that doesn't actually work because they aren't technically part of the same set, even if aesthetically they do match, so it's just a stealth up armor piece that looks unique. As far as getting it then, this is the reward for completing a Colosseum armor challenge down in the depths, specifically the Desert Colosseum, which is located right here on your map, essentially under where the Thunder Temple is on the ground level. This is the nearest shrine to it right over here, head to the entrance of the Colosseum then, light it up with bright blooms if you have the need to, and this one is going to be four rounds of Horoblin combat, and at the end you can open the chest in the middle and you'll find yourself the helmet waiting for you there. This is the Sheik. Number 4, Zant's Helm. And this is a solid helmet, with its unique skill making you completely immune to the frost status that would freeze you when taking ice damage. It doesn't make you immune to the damage of ice attacks or even resistance, it just means that you won't turn into a block of ice anymore, so it's pretty useful when you're fighting ice-based enemies for that reason. Unfortunately, it cannot be upgraded at all, so you only have the ability to use its base defense to work with. As far as getting it then, this is the reward for another one of those Colosseum combat challenges within the depths, this one being the Scorching Colosseum in the Northeast. For an above-ground reference, it's essentially under this little lizard-shaped lake here, again just head to the entrance, this one is full of moblins. Initiate the fight and you'll have four rounds of varying difficulty of moblin encounters, and when you finish them, the chest will open containing the helmet itself. To survive in this area, you do need the flameproof armor which you can get in the Goron City. Number 5. Lightning Helm This is a beautiful helmet that comes with the skill Lightning Proof. This makes you essentially immune to lightning, just as a whole, which is fantastic, as well as obviously making you immune to the shock effect as a byproduct of that too. With this, you can walk around in a thunderstorm with metal weapons and essentially just become a beacon for high damage strikes, hitting any enemies that are near you, which is awesome to do too. As far as getting it, this one is a little bit of a challenge. First, you need to get the Yiga armor set, and to do that, we have a full in-depth video on this concept that's already on the channel if you want to check it out. With the spark notes on this part specifically, is head to this location, defeat the enemies in the building there, go inside and talk to an NPC, then head to this location over here, this house surrounded by a bunch of spikes, defeat the enemies in the building, talk to the NPC inside, and then go to the cave located right here on your overworld map. Inside of it are more enemies, and then you actually want to turn around and use Ascend to enter a hidden chamber above the main cave area itself, and then talk to the NPC inside of this place for the final piece of armor. With all three pieces equipped, you can now enter Giga hideouts like this main one over here in Gerudo Highlands. Head to this location and knock on the door while wearing the full armor set and they will let you in. Follow the pathway on your right until you reach this massive sprawling room and climb up and walk over to the center platform with the Blade Master. He will tell you about a combat challenge that you can undertake. If you win three rounds of this combat challenge by defeating specific numbers of Yiga Clan members in a time limit, then the final reward is this helmet itself. Number 6. The Ancient Hero Set 
And this one is actually pretty amazing visually and functions in a somewhat interesting way. Essentially, this is a single piece of armor, a single item at the very least, but you can't equip other pieces of armor with it and it overtakes your entire character aesthetically speaking too. It is incredibly unique and it has 12 total defense as a base, but can be upgraded to 84, which makes it match the other highest defense sets in the game. As far as I'm aware, it has no armor skills to speak of, just a really cool looking set that is essentially a trophy for, well, completing every single shrine in the game. Yep every single shrine, every one of them, that's how you get it. Once you've done that, interacting in the final shrine will tell you to go to the Temple of Time for a reward back on the Great Sky Island, and once you do so, you will find a chest with this lovely armor set within it. And that's it for today, everyone. Another collection of awesome armor to grab for yourself in Tears of the Kingdom. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy using these sets for yourself once you've grabbed them, as you will have them around to use for the rest of your journey. Like if you liked the video, subscribe at the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye